These two pieces were printed on the same 3D printer. It is the same model, same size settings, the very same decode file. So, why was getting these blobs? Hold on to your seat because to fix this problem, I had to turn off a feature that comes enabled in most new 3D printers, including yours. But you can fix it now on Geek Detour. If you download this model, slice it and save it on an SD card, your 3D printer might give you something terrible like this, or just in some areas. Do you have a guess why it happens? Write your guess in the comments before we continue, because I found just a few videos talking about this particular problem. It can happen in printers from any brand, and we can change that. The best way to visualize it is to print in vase mode, because they should be completely smooth. So I took a picture of this mystery and I posted on a 3D printing users group asking, do you know what's going on here? And the answers were all over the place. The top guess was it's wet filament. Yeah, humidity in the filament bubbles up in the nozzle as water vapor. But it makes the whole part ugly and our mystery part has blobs just around this area. Then it suddenly gets perfect. And if you look closer between the blobs, the plastic is pristine. Humidity is not the problem. Another guess was it is randomized seam. That's not a stupid guess at all, because the seam makes a very ugly line, and to make the seams less obvious, you can randomize its position in every layer. This is the result. Indeed, you have a bunch of tiny imperfections scattered all around the piece. The difference is that they are random, and in our mystery issue, you can see a pattern. Even more important is that in vase mode, there is no seam. The nozzle should make a non-stop spiral from bottom to top, with no seams. So, what are these? Let me show how these blobs appear when you print. Here is a vase mode printing perfectly. The nozzle never stops moving. But look closely now. There is something wrong happening. From time to time, the nozzle stops briefly. Then it continues and stop again prints a little bit more and stop. The print head is stopped, but the nozzle continues oozing some extra plastic. Each time the printer stops, we get a blob. So the problem are the little pauses. What is making the printer stop? If you are an experienced user, you will shout. Your model has too many vertices. Vertices? It's round. Precisely. What? It's true. STL models are, in fact, made of triangles. Even a cylindrical shape like this gets transformed into polygons. You can make it very low poly, that doesn't look so rounded anymore. Or you can crank it up, high poly, with enough triangles to make it look really smooth. But quality has a price, of course. On a low poly version, this circle uses just 50, 52 movements per layer, 2 kilobytes of G-code. But on a high quality model, the same circle is broken down into 150 movements, 6 kilobytes of G-code for the same layer. The printer needs three times more processing power to make the same movement without pauses. So, does it mean there is a limit to how smooth a curve can be printed? Uh, no. Yes. Well, two years ago, Stefan from CNC Kitchen made this excellent video about blobs. His solution was to reduce the number of movements so the printer would never stop. When Stefan made that video, the printer he tested had an 8-bit board running Marlin at 20 MHz with just <laughs> 16, 16 kilobytes of RAM. <laughs> 16 kilobytes. But things changed a lot. Now SD cards are much faster and 3D printers also got a lot more powerful. Here I'm printing on a Neptune 3 that has a 32-bit board running at 84 MHz with 96 kilobytes of RAM. <laughs> 96. Doesn't look much, right? It's but it's uh, six times more. It is so powerful, powerful enough to print my high poly model without any simplification at insane speeds. So if 32-bit printers can print high poly models at insane speeds without any hiccups or blobs, what on earth was happening here? The culprit was the power off recovery feature. What? Yeah, it's a feature that if lights go off, when electricity comes back, the printer just continues printing. That's a good thing, right? Sure! And it comes activated in most new printers. The fact is, if you disable power loss recovery, you can print a high quality model at insane speeds. But if power loss recovery is enabled and you print a high quality model or print anything fast enough, you get hiccups and blobs. 
but the mystery remains. Power loss recovery. What? How? The reason is, it also uses the SD card. So the printer is constantly reading commands from the card, getting coordinates to move the motors and print. Every new movement is put on a buffer, a queue of movements. For a perfect print, especially in vase mode, this queue should never get empty, because if it does, the print head stops until more movements are put in the queue. Reading G-code from the SD card is fast and the queue normally never gets empty. When you have power loss recovery enabled, Marlin periodically saves the print job state to the SD card or flash drive, like a checkpoint. These checkpoints are what enables the printer to recover from a power down. But while it is busy writing a checkpoint to the SD card, the queue doesn't get new movements. The queue is not big at all. The default is just 16 segments ahead. When you print something with straight lines, that is big enough to keep the nozzle moving through many millimeters and writing a checkpoint doesn't cause any interruption. But a super smooth cylinder like this can exhaust the queue very shortly. So so there is not enough time for a checkpoint. All the movements are quickly printed. The queue gets empty. The printer stops and we get a blob. So what do we do about it? Where I live, energy distribution is extremely stable, so I just disable power loss recovery. And there is a nice bonus. With less writes, my SD cards will last longer. So there is a way to do power loss recovery without an SD card. I will talk about it in a second. But most printers use the SD card and the Neptune 3 didn't come with a menu option to enable or disable power loss recovery. So I prepared two G-code files to do that. I will put a link for them on the description so you can enable or disable it in our printer too. By the way, now on YouTube, there is a button where you can buy me a thanks. It supports me to keep making videos. Yeah, there is a better way to have power loss recovery that doesn't interfere on the print quality. It writes a checkpoint only when a real power cut happens, but it needs some hardware changes. If you are the type of person that likes to change your printer, Chris from Chris Basement made an excellent video that I will link in the description. So far, the simplest option is to disable power loss recovery and, if you care enough, buy a new UPS battery backup. SD cards can also cause blobs, it's true, but it gets very random, not a clear pattern. You should buy a decent Class 10 SD card from a reliable brand. Octoprint also causes blobs also true. It happened to me years ago and the problem was a long USB cable I was using between the Raspberry Pi and my Ender 3. I bought a short, good quality USB cable and it never happened again. Have you ever lost a print job because of a power outage? Or did your printer continue printing just fine after energy came back? I should test it properly, especially because of the super long time lapses I print. By the way, you should watch this time lapse. The camera moves while it prints. I had to create a machine and software to do that. It was insane. I bet you'll love it.